I'm just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you took that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else. Have yeah, to absolutely, to you. because I can't think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Good evening, citizens of Netlandia. Welcome to Aurelia Radio number 155, recorded Friday, May 19th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really. I'm your host, Andy Cowan, and I have my usual suspects. I've got Stephen Griffith, and I've got David O'Connor. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome back to the party. Such we as try. it is. Yeah. I, yep. I don't know if this is a party. It's slowly becoming Oh, late. it's a party, Stephen. <laughs> and clearly, I'm not in the cocaine corner. <laughs> well, speaking of um, speaking of the cocaine corner, you know we make mistakes. So please, if you find any, uh, go ahead and let us know. Send us a note at O'Reilly Radio Podcast at Gmail dot com. That's O R L Y R A D I O P O D C A S T at Gmail dot com, or phone it in at four seven zero two 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 six seven five. Nine. And I also like to thank our $5 a month Patreon supporters. Uh, since we put out content fairly regularly and sometimes it's super long form and diced up, we only charge you once a month. And our $5 supporters are Donald Davis, Melissa G., Henry, and Daniel Duncan. So thank you very much for continuing to support this little endeavor. Um, doing video and audio and all of that. Uh, not only is it making my hair go a little whiter, but it's also a little expensive. So I certainly appreciate anything that you do. And if you would also like to support us, there's patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash O'Reilly Radio. And you too can help me. That would be wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I was just trying to break down what's happened this week. This is going to be all politics because everything is politics. But really... This has been an eventful week for the Trump administration in how, oh my God, awful some things have been. However, there has been an awful lot of just noise, just terrible noise that means nothing. It's just one of the going to be those, it's a flashy headline because we have to have a 24-hour news cycle, and then it'll go away. It's nothing. It doesn't mean anything. So we're going to try and avoid that. And one of the nice things about having a show that you only do once a week is you can look at the things from the beginning of the week and say, that really was nothing. So uh, let's look at things from the beginning of the week. I've uh, compiled some sources from uh, my friends over at Epic Progress uh, doing the Trump damage report and also um, my soon-to-be friends over at whatthefuckjusthappentoday.com. Um which I highly recommend. Uh, they are more, um, less editorial, <laughs> less fluffy editorial about the whole thing, um, and more just uh, here's here's the news. So, yeah. depending on Epic what you progress like, progress is if you need that spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other one is I like it raw and rough and ready. Right. Do you like snark or do you just want clinical? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so here we're going to be snarky and clinical all at the same time. Uh, so well. just a, as a reminder, since last week we had Gleb Sapersky on with the uh, Pro-Truth Pledge, which, by the way, you should go take the Pro-Truth Pledge, protruthpledge.com. And, uh, and if you can, also support, uh, support his work at... Um, oh... <laughs> I just forgot his website. Gosh darn it. Protruthquest.org. Okay. Pro no, the other one. <laughs> the foundation that's actually providing the backing. Oh, um, um, in insights. Uh, yeah. Shucks. One we'll find second. It. Continue on. I'll get yeah, you the we'll, we'll find it. <laughs> um, but apparently his Facebook account was locked out uh, like yesterday. Intentional insights. Intentional yes. insights. Yeah. Um, so definitely, I, I have I have backed both him on Patreon, and I've also backed Intentional Insights um, monthly for you know trying to keep truth going. So I, I think it's important because if um, 
a dollar is going to go longer than me saying one thing. So in addition to promoting it here, I'm also going to put my money where my mouth should be. So please support truth. We need more of it. Uh, and he's got a good plan there for the for everything. So if you'd like, please go check out our last episode. It was, it was an hour with an, a very, very intelligent person. So, okay. So on to things that were not so intelligent. While we had him on, we couldn't discuss what happened during the week. Because again, signal to noise ratio, we wanted to get his signal boosted. So, <clears throat> um, Tuesday, last, last week, on the 9th, the president, the 45th president of the United States, the orange monkey, President Donald Trump, um, he fired FBI Director James Comey. And there was much uproar, which is not surprising. We're still having uproar from it, you know, another week and a half out. Uh, the, it was rarely loose circumstances as to why. And as we continue to find out more information, it was a plot, essentially, by the president and his administration, primarily the president, to concoct something that would get the guy that is investigating his campaign for collusion with Russia to no longer be investigating him. He fired the guy investigating him over trumped-up charges, pun intended, (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Of his mishandling of the Clinton email scandals. Mm-hmm. Now, whatever you say, yeah, he probably should have been fired for that a while ago. Not now. <laughs> yeah. So. Not after things come up going, yeah, we're now going to indict you and start an investigation, and okay, now we're going to fire you. Exactly. That just doesn't look good. I don't care your reasoning. That doesn't look good. No, very bad, very bad. So two days later on Thursday, uh, Trump admitted to firing Comey because of the Russia investigation. Quote, when I decided to just do it, I said to myself, you know, this Russia thing with Trump and Russia is a made-up story. That's what he said. He's on tape. <laughs> yeah. Directly before meeting with the Russian ambassador. Yes. Um, What do we have to say about that? Other than, let's see. Jeez, was it just last week? All that happened just last week. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's the amazing part. Again, things are happening at just a breakneck speed, so it's impossible to figure out what's actually going on. So... The Russian ambassadors arrived and met with him behind closed doors in the Oval Office. The Russian media was allowed to be there and was even taking pictures and tweeted things out. However, the United States Free Press, if we still have such a thing, was not allowed. But we do. That's why they weren't invited. That may be the case. Yeah. But they were were not allowed. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, part of the whole everything coming out so fast. It's yeah. We used to have these wonderful walking tours to the United States. May, maybe an old steam train tour of the United States, and we, in the space of one election, decided that you know what Formula One sounds fun. Nah, we went straight to Concord. <laughs> eh, what's what's Mach two between friends, right? <clears throat> yeah. Um. Right. So that was fun. Um. <laughs> Let's see. So also, there was a, a bit of a kerfuffle, again, falling out from the whole Comey thing. What? Weird. I know. Amazing, right? That uh, basically, Trump is trying to intimidate him because now the Senate and the House, they both asked him to come in and testify. Now You know, it's like he might know something. Or right, something. right. Now, Weird. the inter- interesting thing, Comey said no. <laughs> He declined to come in to the closed investigation, the the closed interview. Instead, he wanted it to all be public. Ooh. And now both the House and Senate have agreed to that. (laughs) That, if 
he has <laughs> what he might have, that would give him a lot of protection by going, hi, this isn't behind closed doors, and I can't just... Okay, let's go a little conspiracy level here. Thank you, David. Um, he can't just be quietly disappeared after only the Senate or only the House hears him. It'll be, oh, yeah, by the way, they heard, and so did the American people along with everything else that's on the Internet. That's fair. That's entirely fair. <laughs> Uh, for those of you that only listen in audio, you miss out on the video, as David has now donned his very, very shiny tinfoil hat. What does the hat say? <laughs> the hat says this is going to be the best ratings <laughs> <laughs> for that uh, uh, testimony that have ever... The TV stations, they're going to love it. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. And plot twist, not saying Comey's going to die on the stand. But damn. But they're going to shoot him. <laughs> Whoa. With 35 millimeter, right? <laughs> no? That was the wrong kind of shooting, huh? Maybe. Uh. <laughs> we may never know the caliber <laughs> of that photographer. Wow. Okay. But. We're still talking about photography here. Absolutely. Sure. Okay, so <clears throat> the president um, <laughs> the president uh, said that he hopes that uh, well he he tweeted out a threat that Comey should hope that he doesn't have tapes of his meetings in in the white in the White House with him, being completely unaware that everyone's reading his tweets <laughs> and that now. The Senate and the House, as they're continuing to investigate these things, because this is kind of a big deal, uh, they want the tapes. So they're subpoenaing him for the tapes. The ACLU is suing him for the tapes. Yep. Freedom of Information Act. All of that's happening. Um, in yep. addition, this then brings up the, are you recording all the meetings that take place in the Oval Office? Nixon style here. He had gotten rid of the the official recorder. Did he? My understanding is that he's an idiot. Yeah, because there there <laughs> was a there was a tape recorder in there where all of his meetings were taped, and then he got rid of that. So to upgrade it to a speaking spell, and you got another one. Maybe. That's just private. Maybe he's just using his Samsung Galaxy S3. <laughs> Do you give him that much credit for technology? Well, that's what he has. That's what he's been tweeting off of this whole time. An S3? An My S3, God. yes. <laughs> that phone has seen some shit. Yeah, it has. It has, definitely. I mean, they're they're not even... <laughs> okay. We digress. That's what we do. I'm but, amazed the touchscreen still works. Uh, I'd have thought he'd have worn it to death by now. Well, he had it plated in gold, I'm sure. So, who knows? Anyway. That wears off easier. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, he, he just keeps having it redone. Mm. Okay, so... Um, oh, gold Sharpie, I got it. Yeah, so, something like that. Something like that. It's paint. Yeah. <sighs> this is hard, guys. This is hard. There's so much to go through. Um, in the closed door meetings, it was leaked that Trump himself leaked information to the Russians that could put some of our assets, our national security, you know, spies, some of our spies or allies into jeopardy. I, I read later that it was actually Israeli intelligence assets that were compromised. Right. That was what, as as the leaks continued to pour forth, that's what seems to be happening. Which tracks with what I thought after Netanyahu visited Trump. Really? <clears throat> uh, and that's a few episodes back. Yeah. You'll find me quoted as saying that Trump is going to hang Israel out to dry. Oh, well, some of his other statements uh, seem to go right along with that. 
Uh, to which all I have to say to Netanyahu is, do you miss Obama yet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at, at least <laughs> yeah. he signed the checks. Um, it has been further revealed that Trump had asked uh, James Comey, former FBI chief, to shut down the Michael Flynn investigations. Which is pretty bad. And he asked him also to, you know, whether or not he could count on his support, his loyalty. He was asking for loyalty pledges from people. And to Comey's credit, he said that he, support, he supports the office, you know, that he was going to do his job. He did not swear loyalty or fealty to, uh, to Trump himself. And then he was fired. Yeah, and here's where things continue to get interesting. Um, it is the habit of FBI agents to keep notes. You know, it's, it's a thing that people do. It's kind of a trade craft. As, as, you know, they keep notes on things that happen. Interesting conversations. Even uninteresting conversations. But typically, if there is a concern... They cover their asses. I think I mean, 27 year yeah. veteran of just such an organization where that is standard practice. Mm -hmm. So Comey kept detailed notes of his meetings with Trump, documenting what he perceived as improper efforts to influence a continuing investigation. And that's how he's going to get shot. And FBI agents' notes are widely held up in court as credible evidence. Of conversations. So it happened, guys. It's gonna get weird. Yeah. Now, as a deflection attempt, they wanted, you know, they being the the right wing um, pundits that are just trying to spin it every time to but what about the other guy? What about the other guy? What about Obama? Well, it turns out that uh, Comey didn't take any notes on his meetings with Obama because Obama wasn't doing anything illegal. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Weird. Isn't it? Kind of weird. It's almost like he understood that the president isn't all-powerful, can do whatever the hell he wants with no consequences. You, you would expect less from a constitutional scholar. Yeah, you would. Um, then Donald, Donald Trump uh, tweeted out a defense of his, uh, his Russia leaking, uh, saying, As president, I wanted to share with Russia at an openly scheduled White House meeting, which I have the absolute right to do, facts pertaining to terrorism and airline flight safety, humanitarian reasons, plus I want Russia to greatly step up their fight against ISIS and terrorism. All right. So, um, yeah. What is there to say about this? Well, three administration officials conceded that Trump simply did not possess the interest or knowledge of intelligence gathering to leak specific sources and methods that would do harm to the United States allies. That's in the New York Times, folks. So, the there's a few things we could take away from that. A lot of things we could take away from that. <laughs> Is it simply a matter that he lacks all the interest to get information that's <clears throat> valuable? Or the ability? Or are, they act, are the intelligence agencies actively withholding that information from the President of the United States? Well, it's does he not have access? Does he not have interest? Does he not have the ability to comprehend all of this? Are they keeping things from him? All of or the is above. It simply, or is it, there's another option. Maybe he doesn't really care about the rest of the world. Well, he only cares about places where he has hotels. I mean, I, I say this as I have evidence that that is where his, where his I'm not going to argue against lie. it. Yeah. 
I'm not going to argue against that logic, but maybe I know. his focus, maybe his focus is more laser focused on the United States, mainland United States, not so much what's happening anywhere else in the world. Well, and that's something that traditional intelligence gathering is not going to necessarily willingly help him with. Because their focus is, generally speaking, the rest of the world. Yeah. Now, here's here's the things that are... We have to keep in mind the delegations of powers. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily within the Trump administration or the House and the Senate and, you know, the three arms of our, of our leading group, but also of what the FBI does and what the CIA does. Now, the NSA, they get tricky because they they don't really have boundaries as set forth as like the CIA versus FBI. Central Intelligence Agency is, there are spies. They're the spooks. They look at well, everything outside the country. Again, the quick breakdown is simply this. The CIA actually does human intelligence. It's, yeah, the spies, the actual people in the fields. NSA is all signal intelligence. They don't have people. Yeah. They're analyzing phone calls and videos and all that kind of stuff. They don't have people on the ground. Right. And then, in theory, all of that information is supposed to go into a pot that both the CIA and the FBI would be able to utilize. Analyze. In theory. Yeah. However, as we've seen time and time again, a lot of these agencies don't play nice with each other. Because of budgetary concerns. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that all, it's all wrong. I was going for, for anyone who's not been interested in it or know about much about the intelligence community, there are reasons why. They're bullshit reasons, but there are logical reasons why. Well, there are reasons. <laughs> yeah. There are reasons. A lot of them are, you know, a lot of uh, excuses. Um. Let's see, other things that happened, um, because, I mean, we, we could just go on and on with that, and we certainly will as, oh, yeah. as more information comes out. But on Friday, uh, Trump lawyers state that uh, tax returns for the last 10 years show no income from Russia, with few exceptions. <laughs> I love that term. <laughs> with I few exceptions. I love the small print feel of that. It is. And it's like, but didn't you, you then just said that, yes, there is something. That's not, you the, can't the say there's statement. no smoke except for that man smoking. The second <laughs> half of that statement makes the first half of that statement untrue. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So. I said with few exceptions. Uh, just <laughs> redonkulous. Absolutely redonkulous. Um. So, um, Sean Spicer, the press secretary for the White House, uh, he has refused to deny that Trump is recording guests at the White House who have meetings with him in the Oval Office. All he has to do is say that, no, Trump is not doing that. I feel mm-hmm. like um, this is a, may end up being a red herring. It may just because of the amount of press coverage it's getting. I think it's important to know, though, whether or not there is there are recorded conversations there. Right, but because it's things exactly like this that the press grabs onto yeah. and, and shakes around in their, their maw uh, that mm-hmm. keep them busy. This is the busy bone, potentially. Well, they want uh, to be able to subpoena those and find out what juicy tidbits are going on. That, oh, yeah. You know, that Sean Spicer's the bone, but what, what his information is is the marrow inside, and that's what they want to crack through. Right. But Not to say I'm that saying, press agents at the White House are angry dogs, rabid, chewing on Sean Spicer. But well, I'm also not, not not saying that. <laughs> he is a meaty man, so... <laughs> But what what I'm getting at is this is kind of like the uh, the the smoke and mirrors routine. They they threw out this thing that's really tasty, 
And if they can just get through the tough exterior, maybe they'll have something that they really, really covet. Except for now he's free to do something else while everyone is fixated on this thing. And that's why he tweets things. Yes. But with this... It started as a tweet. Yeah. So he's he has brought that forward, but the thing is the implications behind that lead to it being a story, a bigger story. You know, if it was just a flash in the pan, I'd, I'd ignore it. But it matters right, but because this, he is... This, it, it works beyond the press, though, because now both mm-hmm. the Senate and the House and all the subcommittees and, and everybody want to subpoena those records. So one way or the other, now that he's revealed that they may exist, now he has to show that they do or do not. Right. Legally, he has to show it. Literally no app. But he's, den- but he's denying all of it, and he's not doing anything about it. Right. So we wait. But it's eating up a ton of press coverage. Eh, it's a and byline. Except, except of course, headline. except of course, when Sean Spicer uh, shuts down a press briefing and hides in the bushes and won't come back out until the lights are turned low, and it's weird, and that happened. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I mean, it's. This is it becomes a Benny Hill sketch at some point, and we just play yakety sax and chase him around the White House. And then they sign legislation that is horrible. Yeah, that we should all stop, you know, stop harassing him. Or we have Newt Gingrich who's saying that you ought to shut down the press room. And that is a frightening thing that we shouldn't allow in any case at all. But they'll do it. Well, that would be terrifying. That would be absolutely That's terrifying. That's exactly why they'll do it. Maybe you should take off that hat. You should take off that tinfoil hat. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing too many reflections in it. It's not good. It's all bad. <laughs> okay. So, well, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily... That he is intent on becoming a fascist dictator. It's that he already but is. Appear, but the uh, but by giving the appearance that he's doing all the things a fascist dictator would, sucks all the air out of the room, and we can't talk about what's happening with net neutrality, which well, is the, going to go away. They've essentially killed it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Or you know they'll they'll do something against abortion, or they'll Which, they'll do yeah. more anti LGBTQ uh, legislation, and that'll just all it all flies under the radar because we lack the ability to talk about it because yeah he just shut down the press room <laughs> yeah there's too much going on that's yep and all I'm doing here is. Just, I'm glossing over what happened last week. Yeah. I really am. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, the fact that three administration officials conceded the Trump thing is that he just doesn't have interest. That was just Tuesday, guys. My God, it was just Tuesday. That's just Tuesday. And before that, um, just as a little levity, but also to try and, you know, bring out a little more of the man. On Sunday, on his 21st visit to a golf course since his administration began, we are reminded that in an article in 2016 uh, at Washington Post, Trump thinks that exercise, uh, exercising too much uses up the body's finite energy. Finite energy. Yeah. Trump revealed... um, in the biography of the president, which noted that Trump mostly gave up athletics after college because he, quote, believed the human body was like a battery with a finite amount of energy, which exercise only depleted. Now, for you movie buffs out there, especially Stanley Kubrick and uh, Dr. Strangelove, the crazy man 
that set everything into order. You know, the the whole shutting down the Air Force Base and, and all that. Um, I can't remember what, what his uh, what his character's name was, uh, but I'm sure it sounded like McMaster or something, you know. You know, actual generals that we actually have. Uh, he said that, you know, he wouldn't have sex with women because they were they were only after his precious bodily fluids. And he would only drink water and and vodka so that he would also not interfere with the purity not of just his water, rainwater. Rainwater, that's right. That's right. <laughs> because of his precious bodily fluids. You cannot allow your precious <sighs> bodily fluids to be um, maligned. Yeah, yeah. So that's the kind of crazy that can only be written until you have a President Trump. It's becoming difficult to really sort out fiction from nonfiction these days. In fact, continuing on, it was revealed in Politico. The president rarely surfs the web on his own, but his staff have made a habit of slipping news stories on his desk, including the occasional internet hoax. He is being fed false information. And because he has no interest or believes he has no time, he does not double-check anything. He simply trusts the people that put things in front of him. And he has picked people that also don't do any of that fact-checking. <coughs> Bannon. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, also, over that weekend, uh, white nationalist Richard Spencer led torch-bearing protesters defending a statue of General Lee. Literal mob with torches. White supremacists with torches. Yeah, but they were citronella torches. They were. That's only because they're hipster white supremacists. <laughs> And I guess they didn't want to be bitten by bugs. Or they didn't really know how to make a proper torch. <laughs> uh, so they weren't, the, they weren't the preppers. You might be on to something. They, they weren't the preppers. No, they, they just, hey, we got tiki torches. That'll work. I'll just grab them from the backyard. <laughs> or somebody found a sale at a local Walmart. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, it's... I mean, it's sad, but it's also scary at the same time because of the implications that pe a big mob with fire and a horrible cause. Eh. I am worried about my neighbors. That's really what it comes down to because people like that, I, I live around people like that. I know yeah. I do. And I know you do, too, out there in Internetlandia. And you should at least be concerned. I'm concerned. You should be. Well, these, these marches and whatnot where they are out in the open with their masks off, finally. Um, mm -hmm. It's yeah. a double-edged sword. It's terrifying to know how many people it is. But it's also good to know who they are. Like, finally. Oh, yeah. It's out in the open. You finally feel free enough to uh, to espouse these, these opinions openly without a big white pyramid -y hood on. <laughs> yeah, the big white pyramid -y hood. Yeah. <clears throat> and now I clan. can write yeah. down your name. <laughs> yeah. There's that. Oh, okay. So I guess we can move past Tuesday now. So on Wednesday, yeah. Rod Rosenstein appointed former FBI Director Bob Mueller to oversee the investigation of Russian interference in the election. Mueller will take command of the prosecutors and FBI agents who are working on the far-reaching Russia investigation. Trump said that he expects the probe will find no collusion between his 2016 White House campaign and foreign countries. Maybe with some exceptions. 
<laughs> Calling the Russia inquiry a taxpayer funded charade. Well, they identified a person of interest. Yeah. Uh, they've subpoenaed records for Manafort's $3.5 million mortgage. Um, former Trump aides Michael Flynn and Paul Manafort have emerged as key figures in the investigation. Multiple grand jury subpoenas and record requests have been issued in connection with the two men. Oh, it gets better. Two hours ago, mm-hmm. Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, person of interest in Russia investigation. Not surprised at all, in the least. Not a bit. Yeah. Is anybody surprised by that? Anybody? No. And I imagine that people on the other side of the aisle from, yes, we have that liberal bias, uh, but I imagine that our counterparts on the other side of the aisle are also simply shocked in the most sarcastic way possible. But they're not ready to abandon their man because he's still signing everything they want him to sign. Yeah, between that and also making us all crazy, they're really happy to make us crazy. It, it gives them glee in their hearts to watch liberals and Democrats just lose their minds over all this. It brings them so much joy that they just, eh, it's fine. It's schadenfreude. They love it. Yep. So, there was a study. I'm, I'm quoting an actual study by saying that. Which also came out last week. Um, Jason Chavitz has the FBI to turn all documents it has on Trump and Comey's conversations. The FBI has until May 24th to produce the records before the Republican chairman of the House Oversight Committee subpoenas them. Chavitz says that if the memo exists and accurately reflects the conversation, that seems like an extraordinary use of influence to try to shut down an investigation being done by the FBI. No shit. <laughs> Uh, let's see, there was also, yeah, there's a acting director, Andrew McGabe, of uh, the FBI. Today, New York Times reporter, Federal Bureau, okay, so there's, yeah, that's, that's the uh, memo. Cummings' memos were a product of a culture of note-taking, as we said, with the whole FBI thing. I'm just kind of scrolling through here, trying to figure out what the heck has happened. Senate and House Republican Democrats want Comey to testify. Yeah, Senate Intelligence Committee requested that James Comey testify publicly. This was after he said no to the private uh, testifying. Yeah. yeah, he declined that, so that's there. Okay, uh, and House Oversight Committee invited Comey to testify next Wednesday. So this week is going to be very interesting. Yep. But all of these weeks are very interesting if you follow along at home. Um, Democratic Congressman Al Green has called for the impeachment of the President of the United States of America for obstruction of justice. So that is at least out there. Obstruction of justice. That's... Probably, I wish it would mean something nowadays, but it hasn't yet. It means nothing to the pro constitution, pro freedom, pro America patriots who've been screaming for eight years that the law was under attack and America was under attack. And, and now that he's breaking the law, it doesn't mean anything. Everything's fine. Mm-hmm. Everything's fine. Nothing matters. Republicans blocked the Democrats' attempt to force a vote on creating a bipartisan congressional commission to investigate Russian interference, how the intelligence community handled the matter, and Trump's involvement. You're, quote, you're watching an obstruction of justice investigation developing in real time, said Senator Richard Blumenthal, a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. If there were ever any question about the need for an independent special prosecutor, this report is the nail on the argument. And they did finally appoint a special investigator. That was yesterday, I believe. And who was it? Uh, hang on, I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
You guys wanted to mention that Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark has accepted the job at the Department of Homeland Security. Oh, yeah. The SS needs a leader. This guy's a piece of work. This is the guy who wanted to completely remove habeas corpus. He will make the police force of Judge Dredd a reality. No, I am the not. Judge Dredd police force would have actually been competent compared to what he wants to do. He wants essentially to bring back the SS and Gestapo. Hmm. He wants morality they, they police. They were competent. He wants morality police like they have in, in Sharia law countries. Yeah. Yeah. Only, only enforce the laws that we really care about. The ones that are most invasive to your private lives. Yeah. The ones, the ones on those Ten Commandments that they put out in front of the <laughs> public structures that the FFRF yeah. always says, you know, those got to go. Uh, let's see. Members of the Turkish president's security team breached police lines and attacked protesters. Yeah, I, I watched that video. That was downright disturbing. You're watching cops have to use, like, the actual batons on people not lightly, beating the crap out of them, and they were still attacking protesters and back and forth. It was typically like a bunch of very nice-dressed people in suits beating the crap out of others. Because, you know, the Armenians are still upset at the fact that the Turks, the Ottoman Turks, committed genocide in their people. Which is understandable. Yeah, I, I could think of a few, few reasons why. Yeah. Uh, Sally Yates disputed Sean Spicer's characterizations of her warning that Flynn could be open to blackmail by Russia as a heads up. Not surprising. Sally Yates was actually doing her duty and is really quite the patriot. Um, oh, uh, Seems Trump like also we had a lot of patriots a few years ago actually in office. Yeah, amazing. Weird. Um, Trump spoke at the uh, Coast Guard graduating class, and and of course he spoke about himself and his own. Um, his own Mein Kampf Weird. about <laughs> how no politician has been treated worse or more unfairly. And the memes, the memes did flow forth, um, indicating all sorts of political figures that have been executed. <laughs> the, actually, my favorite one that I uh, uh, posted earlier today was uh, – Trump saying this, and mm-hmm. then Obama standing up in the background going, show us your birth certificate. <laughs> I love that. That's good. That's good. I like the one of Nelson Mandela behind bars. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nope, nope. No one's, no one's, a, no, 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 no. Or the, or the picture of, you know, three presidents all executed. Yeah. Or shot. Mm-hmm. You know, at least Reagan was shot. I mean, come on. It's, it's a bit yep. of mistreatment. Um, oh, and an interesting turn of events. Uh, you know that whole deal with Iran to allow their nuclear program to, to continue? Yeah. Yep. And you know how the Trump administration was supposed to pull all that back? Huh. Guess what? The Iran nuclear deal will remain as Trump imposes new penalties over its ballistic missile program. I mean, gee, it's which is like... exactly what we were doing already. Yep. <laughs> It's just exactly what we were already doing. Oh, this was a talking point, actually, with my parents, with my very conservative parents. They, they, were, they were really up in arms about the whole Iran nuclear deal. Oh, weird. So now I wonder if I could go to them and say, so what do you think about Trump's uh, Iran nuclear deal? You know, mm-hmm. the, it's the one probably that's, the best thing ever. You know, the one that's identical to what Obama did. Oh, no, it's totally different. Oh, well, right, right. Show, show me how. How is that different? It's just, it's totally different. He rewrote it. Right, right, right. No, he didn't. I don't have to present any evidence. Mm. Everything's better. Yeah, that's pretty much how it is. Yeah. Uh, and, oh yeah, he's still getting education. Still got that going. Uh-huh. And his approval rating as of Thursday was 42%. Pretty darn low. And that was before, that Estimate was taken before this week. Yeah. Of all the things that happened this week. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, But these, these things still drive him because 
You have heard of me. Yes, oh, but you have heard of me, yeah. But you have heard of me. You're the worst ever, yes. <laughs> but you have heard of me. But you have heard yeah, of me. Exactly. Um, so on Friday, uh, the Trump campaign had at least 18 undisclosed contacts with Russians during the last seven months of the election. Six of the previously undisclosed contacts were phone calls between Sergei Kisak, uh, the Russian ambassador to the U.S., and Trump advisors, including Michael Flynn. That was out on Reuters. Uh, Flynn stopped a military plan Turkey didn't like while being paid $500,000 as its lobbyist. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So, no, he wasn't compromised at all. No. How could that happen? Oh, Flynn had actually told the Trump team that he was under investigation for secretly working as a paid lobbyist for Turkey. Weeks before he came to the White House. <laughs> Awesome. Yep. I mean, at least yeah. he was honest about that then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he at least had had disclosure with his employer. You know, hey, there there might be a thing here. And then Sally Yates says, you know, there's a thing there. You really ought not to. Shut her up. Fire her. Hire him. I, yeah. Yeah. Because that's what happened, folks. Yeah, well, if your goal is to destroy foundations of our government... You know, what it's a better one to start with than justice. <laughs> oh, God. And Trump is staying in contact with Flynn, actually. They're, like, beyond, they're like pen pals. Well, no, it's beyond that. He still thinks and truly believes that he can get Flynn back in the White House and wants him back. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right here. Yeah, uh, Trump pressured a reluctant Michael Flynn into accepting the national security advisor job even after Flynn warned that he was under investigation over undisclosed lobbying on behalf of a foreign government. Trump has expressed hopes that a resolution of the FBI investigation might allow Flynn to rejoin the White House in some capacity. Is there a bromance here going on that we don't know about? I mean, this is kind of weird. <sighs> There I mean, are things I could say, but I just don't want to. <laughs> you want me to put the hat back on? No. <laughs> no, it, it slightly kills my soul. That, And it's not like we need any more conspiracy theories as they are just lined up for us in the mainstream media. No, I'm thinking more just along the lines if they just came out and finally announced that they're gay lovers and their marriages are a sham, I'd be like, okay. At least that's one truth you're telling. Such poor ch- poor. Nah. Uh, mm. ne- neither one of them is gay. No. It just Trump has a has a specific set of of ideals. Yeah. And yeah, you could say that those ideals are something that uh Michael Flynn uh falls in line with. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. And then he of can course be controlled now controlled by foreign governments, it means he can be controlled by Trump. Trump can tell him to jump, and he'd say how high. So and it's if, a bidding war? If, is that the thing? power is all that you care about. So it's like a bidding war? Yeah. Lo- so in true mercenary f- fashion, it's loyalty to the highest bidder. And he thinks that he can bid higher. He, I think he thinks that he can have Michael Flynn's balls cut off. Well, he could. Yeah. As the president of the United States, it doesn't take very many phone calls to make that happen. It really doesn't, folks. If he were to, he could be black bagged at any time. Yeah. That is something that our government is very capable of. And with that kind of uh, compromise behind him, he would literally be at whatever Trump's bidding is in any particular moment. He'd have called oh, off of the Comey. Okay, answer. okay, okay. So you're thinking not that he can buy him, but he can out blackmail the other guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can out blackmail him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, that's worse. That's worse. Yeah. All the while, Trump is tweeting out this is the single greatest witch hunt of a politician in American history. 
except for the actual witch hunts that happen in Salem. How do you know your girlfriend's cheating on you? She, she constantly accuses says, you of cheating. Yeah, and constantly <laughs> says that she's not cheating. Um, uh, Didn't even ask. Wasn't part of the conversation. Yeah, it's like I, we we were talking <laughs> now about it's dinner. Just weird. Yeah, this is weird. Yeah. Um, Rod Rosenstein already knew that James Comey was going to be fired when he wrote the three-page memo that the White House used to justify firing Comey. Rosenstein learned Comey was being fired on May 8th, but the memo was dated May 9th on the day the firing took place. Uh, did you hear how Comey found out that he was fired? Yes. Yes. And that was the most trolling oh. thing I've ever seen. He thought he heard. was being pranked. He was in the middle of giving FBI recruits wonderful speech. speech and everything else and welcome to the agency and everything else and on the screen behind him and across from the lobby from him was Fox News playing that yeah. you know he has been fired and he's like oh that's cute that's funny oh uh, who put that up there and with that, like 45 seconds or a minute later a couple people come grab him and haul him off to a room and then tell him oh no you've been fired can you imagine yeah. being in that position that kind of thing happening like pissed yeah, and a lot of FBI agents have changed their profile pictures on all their social media things uh, to a picture of James Comey, which apparently is a thing that happens when one of their members falls in the line of duty. Mm. So it's an act well, of solidarity that they're doing that. So um, are, are, are they pre-gaming his uh, silencing? No, 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 it's not that. It's that the... We still honor him. There. We still honor him. I see what he did there. And I approve <laughs> of the top pain. Ah, you guys. You guys. <laughs> You're rubbing off me, David. I can't help it. Okay. Hey. Uh, David, hey, I'm... He makes it so easy. David, I'm going to need to need something from you. What you need? I'm going to need the link for where you got that shiny hat. <laughs> Um, because I think that I need to make a merchandise page for Harley Radio, <laughs> you know, complete with tinfoil hats and buttons and, you know, who knows what else, but we, I think we definitely need to start, uh, start allowing our, our listeners to, to equip themselves properly in this day and age. Shiny hat. Exactly. Shiny hat. Um, okay. So also, uh, carrying on. Sean Spicer is apparently no longer expected to deliver daily on-camera briefings as Trump is frustrated with the way the Spicer defends and explains his message. There was also a bit of a kerfuffle thinking that he was going to reboot the White House staff, like fire everybody and bring all new people in again. Even when he hasn't filled out all the positions already. It's mm. amazing. Um, Adds a lot of noise. It is a lot of noise, but it's that's an interesting noise. That's Take like that's like driving along, and suddenly you hear a sound, and you're not sure whether or not it's your car or the pavement. <laughs> did they? It's like did they do something to this road? I'm not sure. And then the wheel falls off and just rolls off to the side, and says, oh well, crap. <laughs> That kind of noise. Not sure whether or not it's your bearings blowing out or just ruts in the road. Not sure. Yeah. Hard to say on that one. Um, and apparently he's still going to renegotiate NAFTA. That yeah, should be try. interesting. It may, you know, it may be the same kind of uh, negotiation with Iran. Everything stays exactly the same. But with a different signature on the bottom. He gets to put his name on it, and thus, oh, look, I have made everything immediately better. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, he's visiting NATO soon. And NATO was, uh, there was an interesting brief on that, that they were, like, trying to child-proof NATO. Yeah. As he was coming over. Warning uh, any briefings that were to be directed to President Trump to be under four minutes. 
Two to four minutes was what they were shooting for. Because he doesn't have the attention span, and everyone knows it. He doesn't have the interest. Yeah, he doesn't. That's the amount of, of information that he can absorb, apparently, at a time. Interesting that our foreign allies no, are... Uh, that, that's how long he can fake interest. In oh, oh. Fake or feign? I think it's just feigning interest, maybe? Fake. Straight up fake? Straight up fake. Straight up fake, okay. Does not care. Right. <sighs> okay, so now we're on to Friday. Today. The 19th. What has happened today? Oh, uh, let's see. The Trump-Russia probe now includes a possible cover-up. Former FBI Director Robert Buller has given the authority to investigate the possibility of a cover-up, though that does not mean that that is part of the investigation currently. Which seems like it's saying something without saying anything, which could be noise or could be a flag on the play somewhere. It doesn't matter because be we're going to keep whole, watching. Could be a whole separate investigation. Could be. Could be. Um, because they might... They might spread out the workload. Hmm. Yeah, but when you're dealing with investigations, the law is pretty particular on what you get to investigate on, on what docket, essentially. But there couldn't be multiple lines of inquiry, and then you can uh, you can take the evidence that has been presented in one case, and you can transfer it to another case as related. So facts that are found in one case can be admissible as evidence and are already in evidence, essentially, into another case. Yes. So that streamlines things. So this is a way to double up the manpower that's already investigating yeah and also if they ax the head of one investigation the other one just keeps on humming along yeah so this is a way of bomb proofing the investigation into President Trump this is the way I read it let's see Kushner intervened to help seal a $110 billion arms deal with the Saudis. Weird. Just in time for Trump's visit to the kingdom this weekend, where he hopes to frame it as a symbol of America's renewed commitment to security in the Persian Gulf. I mean Gulf. <laughs> oh, um... Apparently, they're still looking at uh, creating a new, finding a new FBI director. Trump's attorney didn't want him to sign his financial disclosure to certify the information was true because he was filing voluntarily. Trump's 2016 disclosures will span his general election candidacy, election, and transition to power, which would potentially shed light on the impact of his nomination and election had Trump had on, on his Trump organization. It's interesting. I read somewhere that uh, Joel Lieberman might be head of the FBI. Yeah, better than 50-50 former Senator Joe Lieberman uh, would be his top choice. I don't know what I think about that. Because I don't, I don't really have any... I have no negative remembrances of Lieberman. I have that time that he... Um broke ranks with the Democratic Party and backed McCain over Obama. Hmm. His constituency uh, revolted against him because uh, he stopped espousing uh, progressive ideals. Was it So he, like, turned on a dime? Yeah. Oh, that's not good. No, yeah, we'll it was a while back all that went down. Yeah, well, we'll look. Uh, we'll look at a, a Lieberman retrospective if uh, if he ends up getting the nod. Uh, health insurers are planning to planning rate hikes on Obamacare, and they blame Trump. Interesting. They were going to do that anyway. Yeah, they were. <laughs> there was 
it's just a handy fall guy. State insurance regulators, both Democrat and Republican, have concluded they cannot count on the Trump administration to help them ensure that consumers will have access to a health plan next year, which is forcing them to make plans to raise premiums to account for the turmoil. Oh, no. Well, they're not wrong. They are not wrong. No, not at all. So, yeah. The American Health Care Act... Trump care is going to basically rip away all the money that they were used to getting or we're going to that's, get that's if it, we're providing it's if it goes health care plans oh it's going to go no it won't not in its current form it's it's that's, not going to make it out of the senate that's what all the smokes for mm, no not that alone i don't it's not going to make it out of the senate I'll buy you a beer if I'm wrong. It's not going to make it out of the Senate. I'll take that bet. Okay. I've, that's an easy bet. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's because, again, one, they don't have enough to actually pass it through the Senate because they do not hold the current majority necessary. But also, it's the senators who have a tendency to realize, actually, again, they might not necessarily care about their constituents until the time to vote comes around. And they also know that if they vote for this and how many of their constituents are going to lose their health insurance, just how much that can be used against them in the next election. It's going to not matter. It, well, no, I'm looking at the idea of going, it's simply uh, self-protection. It's yeah, but it's not going to matter. Oh, Why? Trump stands before us basically with all the appearances of being as guilty as a man can possibly be of treason. Mm -hmm. And he has millions of core constituents that are still behind him. Yeah, but we have never actually had a true impeachment trial in this country yet. Fair, but... well. Even with Bill the single-digit approval ratings that our current legislative branch had in the last election with over 90-something percent retention of their jobs, yeah. nothing they do is going to matter. They for, are most likely going to retain the most that part. job. Yeah, for the most part, that's that the way it is. might change, though, with how current politics is going. We can hope. We can not hope for ten years at a minimum. Oh, you're hey, you're not wearing your hat. You can't make those calls yet. Okay. Okay. My my let me change my <laughs> statement. I look oh look, I'm doing true things. Yes, he was impeached, but it was acquitted. There you go. Yes. Bill Clinton. Yes. The only president we've had who probably would have not been acquitted saw the writing of the wall and went, I'm GTFOing. Right. Nixon. Yeah. Yeah. Um Interestingly, since we're talking about health care, nearly 700 positions at the Center for Disease Control are vacant because of Trump's hiring freeze. Weird. A program supporting local and state public health emergency readiness, infectious disease control, and chronic disease prevention are all affected. I'm, I'm sure this won't end with a plague. Oh, no, of course not. At least 125 job categories have been blocked from being filled. Entire categories. <laughs> um, and also uh, rounding things out here, Jeff Sessions and the Department of Justice are telling lawyers to stop representing immigrants in deportation proceedings. They're accusing immigrant rights lawyers of breaking a rule that was put into place to protect people from lawyers who take their money and then drop their case. The cease and desist letter could dissuade law firms from letting their lawyers volunteer for these cases, scaring those firms away by convincing them the immigration-related projects are too risky pro bono projects. Yeah. Nice They're chilling effect there. Down. Hmm? They're going to witch hunt him down if anyone breaks ranks from that order. Yeah, they would. That is that is the Department of Justice <laughs> under Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions essentially saying that if you if you take these cases, 
your career is ruined. I wonder how long it'll be before we see him in the white KKK garb. Sessions? Yeah. There aren't pictures already? I'm, I wouldn't be surprised, really. I haven't gone looking. I'm, I mean, I'm just being honest here. I really thought that there already were. Because he's got a terrible track record. And, of course, uh, White House lawyers are researching impeachment procedures in an effort to prepare for what officials believe is a distant possibility that Trump could have to fend off attempts to remove him from office. That's out on CNN. Yeah. <laughs> what did you find? <laughs> uh, I got to read it still, but it says what Jeff Sessions role in prosecuting the Klan reveals about his civil rights record. Hmm. I'm I'm guessing that's probably not as as cheerful as we thought it might be. Oh, so and what they're doing is they're hiding behind the the law that is protecting them. It's protecting the immigrants from also vicious from, legislation practices. From the Wikipedia article on Jeff Sessions. Mm-hmm. Uh, during the failed district nomina- failed nomination uh, district court, Thomas Figures, a black assistant U.S. attorney, testified that Sessions said he thought the Ku Klux Klan was okay until I found out they smoked pot. Oh wow! Well, at least he drew a line somewhere. Wow. He thinks the Klan is better than weed, folks. Well, that's the attorney general. Everybody draws a line in the sand somewhere. Remember, he was the man considered too racist to be a federal judge. Yes. Sometimes you just got to go around a few stacks of burning napalm before you actually draw that line. (laughs) Wow. Wow. That's nice. The radioactive fallout you ingested on the way to the line. That's okay. No, no, it's it's not okay. But David, but no, the, uh, it's not okay. But, but that pot there, oh man, um, it's it's not okay, man. It's just not okay. Um, oh, the New York Times is also recognizing that people are having a hard time keeping up with all the Trump news, and they have they have a list of uh, of must read pages for that. That's interesting. Uh, Updated an hour ago. (laughs) Um, Yeah, there's a... God. It's a golden time to be in news if you actually have a paying career in it. Yeah, once upon a time, they would have killed to have this much news being generated all at once. Now I think they'd kill to go back. Yeah. Now, it's, it's unfortunate... Because I'm also seeing some interesting stories, though they're they're older now. But like I ignored Trump news for a week. Here's what I learned. Okay, that's nice and all. And and really, let's let's break it down. Let's let's be really brutally honest. If we didn't pay attention to these things, would it affect us at all? Not immediately. Not immediately. But when you see the the giant flash in the distance, that doesn't affect you immediately either. <laughs> it's you have a point. It's coming off the nuke. Now <laughs> you had to wait to get there first. You do have a point. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, now Comey got affected right away. Comey was affected right away. He just had to turn he, around and see see the news about it. See the news about yeah. his firing. Yeah, that's there's, pretty immediate. There's a whole bunch of people in various departments that were also fired as a re, uh, in direct relation to a couple other things that Trump did a couple months back. They were calling them mm-hmm. trial balloons for a coup. And that's why the Department of Homeland Security needs a new head. Um, there's some other things that, that occurred during that time frame. Yeah. They're all, it's, it's kind of a blur. It's too numerous to mention. Yeah. But, 
uh, for for a decent number of people in positions of power that we don't think about or are reported regularly, the uh, the effects are already felt. It's going to take a while for that to filter down to John Q. Citizen. But John Q. Just Citizen. Like, just like the hundreds of people that are missing from the CDC. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna realize the effects of that until there is an actual crisis that they need to respond to, and they ain't gonna have the people. The domino effect. Yep. Or the reverse domino effects, where there's nothing for it to lie, to hit. A next. good parallel would be Katrina. Mm, yeah. Okay, so what I'm getting at though is that this news is not going to make you happy. Having having full access to all of this news as it's breaking all the time is not going to make you a happy person. It's going to make you a cranky son of a bitch. I know because I am a cranky son of a bitch you, sometimes. You could give in to apathy. As he's pointing to himself, folks. Smarmy, he's pointing He's pointing at himself. Sarcastic. 80% of the time, that's an option. Being sarcastic, yeah, yeah. Uh, sarcasm <laughs> is a wonderful defense mechanism. I implement it greatly myself. <sighs> but really, my defense is to only try to go through it once a week and really just to try and pick out the bits. Uh, I do pay attention to the big headlines and know what's going on because really... There is too much to think that you're going to catch up later. It's not going to happen. It's it's too much. You have to keep up with it. And, yeah, this is why the president ends up with super gray hair at the end of his tenure. Because he can't ignore the news either. He has to get it all. Well, this is the first president whose hair is still going to be orange when it's all done. Yeah, but that's not a natural color. <laughs> I mean, really, that's not natural. Like, you it, say, you're saying that's not his real hair? I'm I'm not saying that it's not his real hair. I'm saying that that hair color does not occur in nature, in mammals, in well, in in um, in our genus, it does not appear. <laughs> so he's a lycanthropic lizard man. It's fine. I wasn't going there because. Why would Lizardman have hair? No, see, he's the first. He's the first of his kind. He was the experiment one they threw up here to distract them, distract us from all the rest. He's the prototype. That's why none of the re- we cannot really detect any of the rest. They're all better. If he pulls a mask off and it's Red Skull under there, I wouldn't be surprised. No, Red Skull would be smarter. That's true, and also more athletic. Yes. <laughs> As opposed to, I gave that up. My battery is running low. I don't want to run it out any faster. I can't believe that. That blows my mind. Um, yeah. Okay. I think that's that's probably all the all the news of the the White House and political news that I can stomach. So let's wrap up at least this segment. Do, do you want to carry on? Should we have more? Should we should we dive into something that's less? Um, abusive to our morale or do we have such things well this is here's a slow burn thing that could have a lasting impact trump's budget calls for hits on federal employee retirement programs i'm sorry that's what we're describing it's calls for hits on federal employee retirement programs just imagine somebody walking with a gun executing piles of paperwork (laughs) um, <laughs> just, just shooting the piles of paperwork. <laughs> oh, that's that's beautiful. But yeah, no, um, that that will directly affect the retirements of retired servicemen and women. Yes. Yep. Maybe got some friends who are finally uh, joined. Like a year or two left. So. Yeah. 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 It, it, you know, there was a time in this country that we could rely on large corporations to treat their employees well. That was the whole, the whole model 
that nuclear family model was mm-hmm. you go to you go to school then when you're when you're done with college or maybe not even college when you're out of high school you then go to work for a company and you learn whatever training they have for you and you stick with it all the way through to retirement and then you pick a pension there and that's that you retire happy based on the on the pension the company took care of you well that has pretty much gone away now there are very few companies that offer those pensions the government still offers pensions for now but those are going away too as for some reason somebody thought it was a good idea to run government like a business they're not running it like a business. No, they're not. But they're certainly trying to profit from it. So, what do you do? You take away the overhead. Taking care of people that no longer work for your company is a giant overhead that they don't want anymore. From a business standpoint, from a cold, cruel calculus standpoint, makes perfect sense. Yes. Perfect sense. If you want to move all the money upward. Which, ironically, they do. If you just want to make profits, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Where those profits move to, that's up to the shareholders to mandate, essentially. They would like as many profits as possible. So they give ridiculous sums to the CEOs and the people that deliver better profits to the shareholders. Would you like two or three profits with your tea? (laughs) I would, I would like at least three income units in my tea, please. Whatever the income Doop. unit happens to be. <laughs> three lumps. Yeah, definitely three lumps. Uh, well, we're taking our lumps. And they've taken our lumps, too. Yep. <clears throat> so, at this point, all of those things that your grandparents told your parents, and that they have dug into their heads about how the world is supposed to work that they're desperately trying to bring back that are never ever going to come I back don't feel like they want the golden days they want the days I... when the company did take care of people like that that's what they would like because that's the... part of what they were promised they well, want that the promise generation again. that's in charge now and in everything right. that they've done, they're taking away that promise. Yes, but the people that are voting for those people want them to return it. And they are in on lies that they will. It is the fox in the hen house. I feel like they've given more into the lies that... Um, Make America great again. It is a giant sham. They want the absolute maximum profit without paying out anything while also being able to pay out stuff to pensions and people and everything else. They want literally two things that cannot simultaneously coexist. Right. And they also... Gaslighting the younger generation for their own selfishness and greed. Yeah. Yes. And they also think that somehow you actually can lift yourself up by your bootstraps, even though that that is, of course, physically impossible. Once upon a time, you could. No. No. No, you never could. You never could. Someone always has to give you an opportunity. Right. The opportunity with just a high school education or right. less existed yeah. 70 years oh, no. ago. Yeah, that's, Absolutely. The, the, bar, the bar for entry was lower. In the past, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Look, but the bar for entry was practically been, non-existent. You just but there's to actually never been a time, to truly. Covers. There's actually never been a time in this country, in truth, where you could pull yourself up by your bootstraps. There was always something else there. Yeah, there's always something that allowed you to get that step up in the first. Place. And in many of those cases, in many of those cases, it was stepping on the skull of the nearest person. Yeah, because that got you a little bit higher. I mean, there are a lot of families that have a history of not-so-nice things that got them where they are, and now they're fully legit. Well, they let all that go away, but how they got there... The really big money names of this country. 
Rockefeller. IBM um, sold Carnegie. counting machines to the Nazis. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it Carnegie that had all the uh, Chinese railroad workers, or was that Rockefeller? Both of them. It was both yeah, they they were they were both robber barons. They yeah. built off of slave labor. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's okay. They weren't black. Some of them were. That old John Henry thing, remember? Yep. That was there too. So. No, we took we have. We have a long history of taking advantage of anyone that we can to scrape our way up. That is the pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. That is the narrative that they don't want to talk about or share or anything like that. Because it's not rosy. To truly pull yourself up by your bootstraps is to make sure that someone else sinks beneath you. It's cruel and it's ugly. So in order for us not to have people step on each other, you have the government there that does provide opportunities. And then you have the opportunity and you run with it and you go do your own thing. Wonderful. But that's yeah. not what the American dream was. The American dream never was, really. Well, it's much darker no, the and American much dream more bleak still than that the, thing. But that yeah. thing is a dream. Right. It's a dream. The American reality <laughs> is everyone's drowning, and you grab the closest person to you, and you push them under the water and use them as a float. Yes. Uh, let's be true. It's not the American dream. It's the American nightmare, because we've all been taught from young ages to believe this bullshit, and it's so ingrained in us to believe it, but it is not true and does nothing but essentially keep us oppressed. Well, that fuels the apathy when you get into the real world. Yeah. I should write a book called actually, I w- Waking Up from the American Dream. Actually, I want to <laughs> make a book called, uh, I want to actually write a book, and if you want to help me with this, and you too, David, call it The American Nightmare, about the American Dream, but one of the chapter names I want to, I want to call is The Bootstraps Bullshit. <laughs> that'll, that'll, uh, that'll grab some attention. Mm-hmm. It's all about those headlines. I think we can do this. Cover story, yeah. I'll quote a, a movie here of Ian's. Uh, it's called Head Office. And it's like, look, I own this building. I own that building. I came to this town with barely $40 million in my pocket. And now I own all this. <laughs> barely $40 million. Barely $40 million. You know, just get that, you know, small time. Right, small yeah. Small loan. Of small family dollars. loan. $100 million? $200 million was it? I, I can't even remember. But it's wow. a million, but still. that's A million adjusted for frickin' 40 years of inflation is a lot of millions. That's true. Hmm, let me see. Trump's startup loan. I'm sure that's out there. No, it, it was interesting having discussions with my parents and how they would lose their collective minds. When I told them how much I was going to be paying for a car. Oh. You can buy a house for that. Ah, uh, No. Oh, yeah. In Detroit. <laughs> doesn't have running water. Wait, 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 wait. There. Wait. I was, I was looking at something and two things overlapped. What did, was the conversation with your parents? The conversation was about how much I would be paying for a car. This was a while back. Oh, okay. And then talking about how they, when they bought their first house, that's how much the house cost. Yeah. Well. They have not adjusted for inflation. (laughs) They have not adjusted for inflation. Well, they had to because then they needed a new vehicle. Yeah. Unfortunate for them. Uh, Oh, uh, Marco Rubio had said that Trump started off with $200 million from his father. Donald Trump then later, in 2007, admitted that he borrowed at least $9 million from his future inheritance. Oh, such a problem. A, from that's the International Business Times from September 26th of 2016... A Wall Street Journal investigation published earlier this week uncovered a document showing that in 1985, Trump owed his dad 
and his dad's company is roughly fourteen million dollars. Yeah, uh, a spokesman for the Trump campaign told well. Trump journalists that previously been talking about a set 1975 loan that was indeed just one million dollars. Okay, so we have a start date and we have a amount. 1975, one million dollars. Let's see. Um, I got the inflation figures for you. Uh, let me see if I got. I may have the same thing here. 14 million to 31 million. No, this was. This is just. Uh, in 2013dollars.com. Oh, interesting. Actually, so, I have the national inflation calculator, which would do it to today or to 19, or 2016s. Oh, I was just quoting Politico. Oh, okay. Uh, this one, this one calculates to whatever year you want. Nice. So, hundred dollars and eighty-five was two hundred and twenty-six dollars and forty cents today. One hundred was two hundred and sixteen. One hundred dollars translates to two hundred and twenty-six dollars and forty cents. Wow, one hundred and forty-six percent increase. One hundred twenty-six, but yeah, yeah. Wow, still. Oh, the world is a scary place, folks. So um, I think that's going to at least wrap up. Not on a shiny note. Uh, that'll wrap up. This uh, this edition here, and uh, we'll see. Well, we'll see if we have anything more to talk about in the break. But this episode is done, so there it is. So if you've enjoyed what we've done here and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways. You can donate to the show through www.patreon.com slash O'Reilly Radio and get early access to full show content. You can also make the algorithm work for us by reviewing us on iTunes to boost our ranking, get us in front of more people. Use your words, tell somebody about us, somebody that would enjoy the show, hopefully enjoy the show, or at least get something from it. And of course, engage with us directly. Send us a message on the social medias or the electronic mails at O'Reilly Radio Podcast at gmail.com. Or if you're the more talkative of sort there's 470-222-ORLY that's 6759 always ready to take your call or your text and if you don't like what we've done here you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255 available 24 hours a day 7 days a week the Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you and your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on us. This has been O'Reilly Radio, part of the Random Acts Company. This work licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pamgea, created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Thanks, everybody, and you can check for the show notes, and hopefully we'll have everything in there, and we'll see you real soon. Toodles.